You must have a basic familiarization of what it takes to get a license in Utah, and usually that's not a problem for most test applicants because you reviewed those before you went to real estate school. What does come up occasionally is the point system that fulfills the experience requirement for getting a broker's license. To get a broker's license, you must have three years full-time experience. That doesn't mean that you've had a license and it's been hanging with a broker somewhere and it's been three years and so, wow, it's month 37, I can go down and now get my real estate broker's license. No, you have to have sufficient points in order to get the broker's license to satisfy the three years experience. Yes, you have to have three years full-time experience. But what does that mean? Well, the division, through the commissioners, have come up with the point system. And so there's different points you can get for different things. Selling real estate would be the main thing they're looking for. And you get two and a half points for every piece of residential real estate that you sell, more for duplexes and fourplexes, more for apartment buildings, a couple of points for an improved lot, 10 points for vacant subdivision land. Just have a basic familiarization. Also have a basic familiarization on optional experience. In other words, you could perhaps have two years full-time experience as a real estate agent and one year's experience as perhaps a CPA or a mortgage loan officer or maybe a licensed escrow officer or maybe a designated appraiser or a general contractor or a bank officer that does real estate loans and so forth. Even being a licensed pre-licensing instructor can get you some points towards your broker experience. But whether it's actual real estate experience or alternative experience that they will accept, it still has to total three years full-time experience. Not two years plus something else, but three years full-time experience. That is the key here. Part of that three years full-time experience can be fulfilled by other types of acceptable activity, but it's still three years of experience. That's what I want you to remember. Can you get a Utah real estate license, whether it's a salesman or broker's license, and be a non-resident? Yes, you can. There's not a problem with that. The requirements are pretty much the same as they are for getting a license if you were living here. But there is one exception, and that is if you are a actively engaged real estate licensee in another state and you're in good standing, then they may waive part of your experience requirements. They may even waive part of your educational requirements on a case-by-case -case basis, particularly if the state you're currently licensed in uses the same national portion of the test that we use here in Utah. And that is done by a national provider. If you've passed it once in your home state of, let's say, Idaho, they may waive you taking the national portion. You may only have to take the state. And that's reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on which state you're from. And, of course, everything is predicated on you being in good standing in your resident state. But you can get a non-resident license. If you're getting a non-resident broker's license, you must maintain a trust account in the state of Utah. And you must also have a physical address in Utah where your records are kept. Not a Dropbox place, but a place where your records are actually kept. And usually you can find someone that will accommodate you and keep a couple filing cabinets in your basement or something. But getting a non-resident license in Utah is certainly something that can be done. There are a few states in which Utah maintains something called reciprocity. Now, what that means is if you're in one of these favored states, and there's not too many of them, but if you are in one of these favored states, they will issue you a license in Utah without any further bother other than a small application fee. And that's pretty cool, but there's not that many states that do that. You have to check with the division to find out if you have a license in one of these favored states. And if so, you're pretty much good to go in Utah with just an application fee and a little bit of a background check. So that might be something you'd want to check. And that comes and goes with various states. At one time, we had reciprocity with the state of Montana. And I obtained a Montana license for only a $50 fee 
in the state of Montana because Utah would allow Montana brokers to do the same thing in the state of Utah. But after a while, I guess there was a falling out between the states or that changed or maybe no one ever asked for it. So they don't do that anymore with Montana, but yet they might do it if you ask. So it's something that changes a lot and you just have to check to see which states are in that favored reciprocity status. And sometimes if it's not in that status, it doesn't mean it couldn't be there. It just means that something has to be worked out between the real estate directors in both states and then approved by their commissioners and then away you, away you go. Might save you a bit of schooling, but at this point, if you're listening to this review, <laughs> you probably already had the schooling. So let's keep moving along here. When you receive your license from the state of Utah, it's going to have two pieces to it. There's a large piece, which we affectionately call the wall license, and there's a small piece that's a pocket card. You're supposed to carry that pocket card with you whenever you're conducting real estate transactions. And uh, it's just good to put it in your uh, wallet or purse and keep it there all the time. The wall license must be given to your principal broker. And even though we call it a wall license, it doesn't have to be hung on the wall. It just needs to be kept in a file somewhere so that if someone from the general public, if they happen to come into the office, could ask your principal broker or staff, hey, that Rick Roller guy, does he really have a license? I want to see it. And they'd have to produce it to show that, yes, he really does have a license. When you transfer from one broker to another, you have the right to get that wall license back so that you can go to your new broker and then give that wall license to them. But of course, a lot of this is done electronically now, and you can either change your affiliation with a physical card, or you can request this online and then have brokers email back and forth with the division and then accomplish it that way. But you still need to go get that wall license because you have to give that wall license to your new broker.